Well, very good evening to you and welcome to the Late Late Show. Today, ladies and gentlemen, as you probably know, a family lost a man that they loved and the country lost a great broadcaster and I lost a great friend. Uh, Jerry Ryan, as you know, was a kind, he was a generous, he was a gregarious colleague and he was a dear, very, very good friend and that I'm going to miss him very dearly and tonight I'd like to say that I hope that he rests in peace. I also like, would like to think, as I was saying to our friends here, that maybe he's pulling up a seat wherever he is tonight with a large gems and saying, right, let's see how this goes tonight. I'm hoping that. Tonight we're joined by some of the colleagues who knew and loved Jerry Ryan. I'd like you all to welcome, if you would please, Mr. Gay Byrne, Mr. Pat Kenny, Mr. Joe Duffy, Dave Fanning, Brenda Dunn, who are joining us on the programme tonight. All I can think of is, is uh, Gay, is this expression keep going around in my head, which is, it's not right. Well, little did I know getting up this morning that I would be ending off tonight, coming on the Late, late Show, to talk about Jerry dead. And it's bizarre for somebody like me particularly, apart from Pat and, and Joan and um, Dave and so on, it's bizarre for me to find myself sitting on the Late Late Show talking to you about him. Since he was 54, he was 20, over 20 years younger than I am. And that's what makes it unbefitting and peculiar and strange and not fair. And uh, what I remember most about him is his jollity, his sense of fun, his skit, his, his bloody-minded awkwardness for the sake of being awkward. <laughs> just to get at somebody <laughs> and to rise them and, yeah. and acting the mick deliberately with his straight face. That's what I will remember him most for. Yeah. And that's what he was so very good at. And, and he gay, was wonderful he knew fun. that the powers that be were going to oh. be down on him as soon as he said something. Oh. He loved that. And he loved yeah, it. Yeah, He'd yeah. come out of the studio and say, did you hear what I said? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he hated above all things the suits upstairs in this yeah. place. He yeah. really hated them. And he loved getting on the wrong side of them. Do you remember? And, uh, and letting them know how much he disliked I, them. I heard you saying uh, today, Pat, that, that he kind of um, made his way towards, uh, had his honeymoon or invaded a holiday of yours. Uh, yeah, I was uh, away on holiday in, in Crete. In a, it's a long time ago. It was a place called Hirsonesis, which is now like Acapulco, but in those <laughs> days it was a small little village. Yeah. And Jerry and Maura had very little money, so they got themselves a, a budget holiday, and uh, I went out to the airport on the coach that was going to pick yeah, everybody yeah. up. I met them. Mm -hmm. I brought them back to the little bahan that I was staying in. <laughs> I vacated my bed, and they spent their first honeymoon night in PK's bed, <laughs> and I slept on the couch. And, and then we, we spent the entire honeymoon together. I mean, they did get their own accommodation after a few days. Yeah. We went to Egypt together. Yeah. We climbed uh, inside the, the pyramids together. And there's an extraordinary story, which is too long to tell, okay. about uh, a very fat American and uh, the Arab guide who led us up the pyramids. Yeah, which is not <laughs> uh, a euphemism. Uh, right? Jerry lay down in the sarcophagus which had once held the body of the pharaoh. <laughs> of course um, he did. I mean, it was mad, mad stuff and wonderful stuff. Yeah. And uh, Maura and Jerry and I, over the years, have often talked about okay. it and laughed about it. It still, it still is a cherished memory, I have to say. And Joe, of course, you know, the, 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 the building we work in by day, the radio centre, is just going to be, in some ways, Hamlet without the Prince. Oh, he was such a... And people... He got strangers talking, didn't he, on the radio? Yeah. And he, he got strangers talking again today. I, I know in town, Henry Street, when the texts are coming through, and Easton's people just stopped and started... Yeah. Such, such was the... Such was he. he was larger than life, and I think knowing him uh, as I did, and, and people here know him, know Jerry longer. Though I knew him in Trinity, but he did law, and I did uh, social work. But um, he was people knew him, and he was part of their lives, and they they knew a lot about him. Yeah. They knew about Rex, and they knew about Elliot, and they knew about Bonnie and Babette and Lottie. Gorgeous, wonderful kids. Yeah. To which he was a wonderful father, and more a wonderful mother, a great father. Yeah. Full of, but. When he, when he came off air, he was bigger again. You just loved being in this yeah. company. And when you left this company, I used to try and mimic things he'd say. Yeah, because yeah. he, he was so... And remember, but the thing I say, he was such a young man. He's 54 in June. Uh, such a young man. But 16 years ago, tonight, Jerry Ryan, this is how long his career is and how much he filled into that dash, that short dash that will represent his life on that bloody headstone. He filled so much into that dash. 
Uh, 16 years ago tonight, he was presenting the Eurovision, yeah. right, with Cynthia yeah. Newmorrow-Kill. Yeah. And before, we all went down beforehand, mainly because there was free drink going down there at the time. <laughs> but we would, Jerry, we'd go down to see Jerry. Yeah. He was totally unfazed, totally unfazed in 1994. And I said to him, like, 200 million, whatever it was at that stage, the president, the Taoiseach, the rock and roll kids, all the things. Mm. And he said, hang on a minute, he said, um, I'm not dancing. But though, by the way, he knew Riverdance was going to be massive. Yeah. He knew his instincts were brilliant. Yeah, but he didn't put money into it. I know he didn't. I know he didn't. I know he didn't. I know That always came out after a few years. His, his instincts were brilliant. But he said, hang on, I'm not dancing. Yeah. I'm not singing. I'm not the Taoiseach. I'm just going to stand beside everyone and uh, re revel in the glory. Yeah. And tonight, 16 years after he was in that theatrical experience, because he's from a theatrical background, yeah. he was due to be in Athlone to open up the RT Drama Festival. Right. And he crammed, and he's been broadcasting. When he was in Trinity, when I knew him in Trinity, Jerry was broadcasting. Even then. And, yeah. Even then. And and he was broadcast in his living room, if he could. I mean, I he was know, a natural yeah. born. Yeah. I mean, Dave, you were one of the first, uh, you know, the, the old Radio 2 and, and now RT2 yeah. ever. Come on at you. Come on at you. <laughs> um, as a young fella, starting out with him, was, it, uh, was he, as, as always, as crazy and acting yeah. a maggot? Completely, 100%. Yeah. Um, I was with Jerry in Pirates. <gasps> Yeah. The Illegal Radio, in 78 we were in Big D Radio together and himself and myself came in with Marty Whelan as well into uh, to FM, or Radio 2 as it was called. Yeah. And um, he was there for a bunch of years and the great years, he'd written about this in his book, the great years in terms of I never felt I was in Led Zeppelin except when I was on those nights, which is around what, 82 maybe to about 88. And uh, I was 8 to 10, he was 10 to 12, Mark Cagney was 12 to 2. And the three of us, we just had a ball that I can't really necessarily totally describe, which would, the better way to describe it might be there's a lot of eulogies about Jerry today and all good, good, good. If Jerry was here now, he'd be saying, Fanny, for God's sake, at least you can tell the truth. Yeah. Jerry uh, wasn't necessarily always good, a bit of a rogue a lot of the time, and that's what gave him the edge that made him what he was, which was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And that's what made him so good at night on the radio, and that's why you can get away with anything at all at night on the radio, and Jerry did that, and he was brilliant. And when Bill O'Donovan came to me and said, listen, we're thinking about him on the morning, I said, if you're thinking about that on the morning, I don't think it's going to work, yeah. I don't think I Ireland's ready for that. Whatever about Gay and the lots of controversy he had and the brilliant things he had and the doors he opened in particular, Jerry's was a bit too much and there was still a bit of, you know, Eamon de Valera ever so slightly in radio, yeah. even by 1978 <laughs> or whatever, or 1988. And Jerry was just, he just, within two months, he just absolutely transformed radio and he completely changed the and, whole And with that, uh, he, he had Brenda. And with that, he had Brenda, talent. exactly. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and Barbara, your, your Barbara reports and Brenda. Were, were so memorable mm. uh, down through the years. And, oh, I know, I mean... 20 years kind yeah. of working on the programme. Wow. It's a lifetime, you know? Yeah. And what used to amaze me about him is you'd see him in studio and, you know, he'd have scripts to do and there'd be guests and he'd do all the, the uh, equipment himself. And it was effortless. Oh, wait, like, wait, it was actually wait, 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 effortless. Listen to her, the scripts. He never read a script. No, he never read a script. <laughs> but if you handed him one, he'd have to read it, you know? Yeah, just but it'd about be it. his first time to read it. Yeah. Would be on air. And you'd have authors come in and they'd say, how lovely it is to have somebody who actually read my book. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> and Jerry would be behind going, yes. yeah. He yeah. yeah. might have read the back read cover book. if they were lucky, you know? You've done that too, Pat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I but I think, I think Jerry that... even read Jerry's book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or did he write it? Uh, no, no. <laughs> no, no, he'll hate you for that. Yeah, he did, he did. I think Joe was quite right when he used the word bold about it. Yes. Yeah. 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 Bold as brass, and he wanted to be bolder and bolder in every particular way. And that's what he got his kids But also, he tra it translated, Pat, I think you'll agree as well, that, he, that he'd go into the studio, he'd do his, his show, whatever, he'd come out, and it would nearly be double the, double the act. Well, that's act, the point. I mean, always people imagine that broadcasters go in front of the camera yeah. or the microphone and they become larger than life. Mm, mm. And it's true of many, many people. Sure. Jerry was actually larger off air than yes. he was on air. Large and all as he is. He could say was anything on then. Air. Yeah. When he came off air, he yeah. was just as good. He didn't, yeah. he didn't conserve himself, he'd entertain us all. Yeah. One person would get a complete Jerry Ryan performance over yeah. a cup of coffee. Yeah. He didn't stint. He was generous in every single way. When I left the Late Late Show and started the front line, first text I get from Jerry Ryan and, and another one, because Maura and he were separated, another one from Maura saying, great stuff, well done, we love the new show. Everything that I've ever done over the years, you'd always get yeah, he was very a compliment like that. and yeah. a generous yeah. compliment from Jerry. Yes. I, I have remember to tell you, sorry, 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 no, I have to tell you that we were all at his 50th birthday, it was his 50th, yeah. wasn't it? And we were all there, and uh, he was asked to speak, of course. And in the middle of his speech, he was 
most extraordinarily and amazingly generous in his comments about me and about the Gayburn show as a precursor to what he was doing. Now, that would have been nice and fine if it had been my party, my birthday party. He would have been expected it. You yeah. would have all have yeah. been expected yeah. to say oh, nice things. Like that. And we do, we do. <laughs> as we do, as we do. We, we say it behind your back 50? as well. <laughs> when are you having your 50th? <laughs> <laughs> but, but to do it at his birthday party, yeah, well, that's a mark of the was, was amazingly generous yeah. and kind. And, and remember and how, how he was. In the last few weeks, anyone listened to his program, I used to, I, I, hundreds of thousands. In the last few weeks, he was, extra, he was pushing every day one thing, and that was that people should have hope. He said it on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and Thursday of this week on his program, yeah. as he would do the papers. Yeah. And I, one conversation we had last week in the, in the canteen was between, he was very well read. Yeah. He understood subordinated yes. debt. Mainly because he had a lot of it, I suspect. <laughs> yeah. right? but he, he, and we were talking about the, the national debt versus the, the, de the deficit. You know the whole yeah, thing yeah, last week, yeah. Greece or whatever. And he goes on the radio to the next day. He, he retails his conversation. But he doesn't say who he's talking about. But he pushes the whole thing. He always added the whole thing was, we've got to have hope. We're a great country. When I was around in the 80s, it was bad. And it was a lot worse than this. But the difference now is, and let's all... And in, in one sense, I heard somebody say, you know, Jerry in many ways epitomised... The, the self-confidence we had, the swagger we had as well, the fun we had, the enjoyment we had, and the self-searching we had during the Celtic Tiger. Mm. Right? Jerry, Jerry in many ways epitomised that. But in the last few weeks, he was talking about hope, moving forward, being generous towards each other, and he was always generous. He, Every programme, he, he mentioned yes, some yeah. journalist or someone up and coming yeah. and gave him a name check. He, was, he loved it. America, as you know, American politics and history, we used to have great conversations about them, so we all did in our own way. And I know that uh, John Fitzpatrick there, who owns that hotel in New York, that Jerry would frequently discuss and mention uh, on the programme. John, much to your delight, no doubt. Uh, he was he, he loved going out to to, to, to the states. I mean, you're gonna you, you must have uh, some interesting tales to tell. Yeah, well, you know, Jerry. Um, as I said, I think I got main two great stories. I think the first one was when he first came out. The World Cup was on, and he wanted to do a, as you were saying there, Joe. That nothing phased him. So he said, I want to do a live broadcast from the lobby. And I said, well, Can we do it in one of the rooms? No, it's got to be in the lobby. It's got to be in front of everybody. We got to do it. And as uh, soon as we just started, it went live. The next minute, the scene opens above. A guest above me had a bath and overflowed and it was start flowing down and I'm going, Jerry, what are we going to do? And he kept going and we just put a nice bucket underneath it and held it there. And got it. That's but that's great. the way, Jerry, he just got it. But the better one, I think, was uh, he was over for, um, I was doing a fundraiser for the first time for Hillary Clinton and uh, I rang him and I just said, you know, I'm doing a fundraiser for, uh, for Hillary. I said, um, you know, did you want to come over? And he says, Jeez, I'm over like a shot. I'm yeah. over. I do it. We'll okay. interview her. And I said, well, I don't know if we're going to get an interview, Jerry, but let's come over. But of course, Jerry comes over and um, I like a thing, he's sitting there and he figures a way past the Secret Service to get to Hillary Clinton and does it. And uh, then the next day we're sitting in the lobby and I think Alice they told the story in drive time today. I just heard. But, um, you know, let's be honest, I don't think he's here tonight, Charlie Bird, but Charlie Bird was around trying to get the story, and Jerry was sitting in the bar, and Alice phones and says, you won't believe it, but Hillary Clinton's just walking up the street with And out the door he goes, and he actually grabs the best interview mm -hmm. with Hillary and Bill Clinton. Yeah. I think Charlie Bird, I hope he's not looking tonight, but he was still <laughs> running around the street. Yeah. Looking I say, uh, do you know what, I'd say the Clintons probably still talking about that, funny <laughs> enough. Yeah. Evelyn, of course, Evelyn O'Rourke from the radio show, you've been uh, his most recent reporter and, and, and working in studio and outdoors uh, with him in Operation Transformation and all the rest of it. And, um, you know, you're going to miss him, aren't you? Oh, I'm devastated. I mean, I was just thinking about him today. I was single when I joined the Jerry Ryan Show. So during that time that I've been working with him, I've got engaged, I've got married, I've had my first baby. And the night I delivered our baby son, Ushin, I got this text from him saying, superb news, welcome to my world. And I think yeah. that summed up so yeah. much of where he was at and that family was at the heart he of everything those kids, he did. Yeah. He loved them. Yeah. He was so enthusiastic about my pregnancy and he used to bore the listeners, I'm sure, with all my symptoms. And I'd come off air sometimes going, should I have actually revealed all of those yeah. symptoms? Yeah. But he loved getting right in there and stuck in and about your different, you know, yeah. all the stuff that was going on. But that's the sort of thing I think he was like that. He, he would find, you'd find yourself telling him everything and then going, is this thing on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You know, and again, Shay Healy, you, you would have worked, with, we heard mention of the Eurovision there recently or just on the panel. Yeah. Again. Well, I'll tell you, what I think about Jerry most is that behind all the macho bluster, the secret of Jerry was that he was the champion, he was the best friend that women in Ireland ever had. And not alone that, but he surrounded himself with a, a mostly female production team. 
and he reveled in the stories they brought to him and opened them up. I swear his rhythm got into their rhythm, you know, the way when women work together. Well, I think Jerry was like that. Yeah. And he, he had the most, he had kind of genius for empathy. Yes. To the point that he'd have people talking, and that strange thing that happens where it feels like there's just the two of them in a the room, exactly. and the person he's talking to just doesn't realise they're on the radio. And John, sorry, John McMahon is, of course, the head of 2FM, Radio 2, RT 2FM, is uh, you would have had dealings with, with Jerry on pretty much on a daily basis, I suspect. Yeah, I mean, I've known him for 15 years and uh, been dealing with him very, obviously, daily since he came to 2FM. Obviously, we, his own family are the people we, we think of most today, but his 2FM family have just suffered a huge loss today, and the, the entire building is just in complete shock, and um, we'll be talking about him again on air today, but the text, I mean, the text we've got in from, from the audience since the, the news broke, uh, this afternoon, we've, I think, three or four reams of paper of, of text being printed out, emails and Twitters and all sorts of stuff. This, the, the nation obviously ha had him in their family uh, as one of their own, and we've lost him today. Yeah, yeah, it's just And horrible. even on Twitter, I don't know whether people saw, but Chris Evans, who graced yeah. this yeah. studio, the, yeah. B yeah. the BBC broadcast. I spoke broadcast. very fondly of him here. Yeah, I, he had, he, I remember seeing it in an interview he did in The Observer. That's right. That he'd give, remember he walked away from Thank God It's Friday yeah. and all that, yeah. and he walked yeah. away from the radio, and he came over here on a holiday, fishing yeah. and he tuned in to G Ryan. That's right. And got and his he, mojo back. And he got his he got mojo his, he did, he did. Because he realised that if you had the skill to go on radio the way Jerry had and embrace all those different topics yeah. and relate to so many people that you, that you were making a difference. And Dave, you'd appreciate that because on, on that show Chris Evans gave me a Beatles ticket which I, I was know, so pleased. I know, yeah, from Candlestick and Park, August 26, August 29, 1966. You were watching and uh, the, uh, the, we went to see Paul McCartney and uh, Jerry was there and he said, did you get that signed by McCartney? I said, I don't think I'm going to get near McCartney. Give that to me, I know exactly. And he we gave it to Peter Reagan. Who yeah. gave it to McCartney? Yeah. Jerry comes back. There's, There's your ticket signed, yeah. and it's now in a frown just thinking. They don't I saw Jerry in the like loo signing it, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> what a, what a, Brenda, what, a, what, what, what do you miss about Jerry? Oh, do you know what? He was so generous, and he was generous as a broadcaster. Uh, he'd always back reference you on air, he'd give you as much time as you wanted. He, when you came up out of the studio, he'd say, how did you get your man to stand on his head? He always yeah. made you feel yeah. like you're an, an integral part of the programme. And what was your knockout uh, moment? Well, I remember, oh, so many. Yeah. I mean, there's mad things. I mean, very quirky as well. And he, he would make you do very quirky things that you didn't intend to do. Yeah. But um, I remember during the World Cup Italia 90, 20 years ago, mm. and when that famous <laughs> penalty shootout, and um, we ended up going on to Rome, but I was completely broke. I had no credit card. I'd missed my flight home. I was actually in trouble, as were thousands of others, but I actually really was. I thought, who can I call? Like, I can't call one of the producers because they're going to, you know, uh, they're going to get me being get me in trouble. I can't call really anybody. So really, the only person I could call was Jerry, and it was midnight. And he called me a couple of choice names and he rang me back about 15 minutes later and he said, tomorrow morning, get yourself to the American Express office in Genoa. There's 500 pounds waiting for you. Get yourself to Rome. Have a great time. Yeah. And like that, that yeah. was the Again, man. Mark, you know? oh, man. We, we were all there. Pat. Dave was there. I yeah. was there. Jerry yeah. was there. And uh, the, the match was memorable. The match of Scalacci beat us 1-0. 1-0. Yeah. 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 And uh, Christoberg and Charlie Hawhey. Uh, did a lap of honour at the end of the yeah. match, I remember that. Yeah. And, and uh, Bono, Bono and the boys were in the stand, yeah. and uh, every time Bono wanted to go to the toilet, there were guys going, Bono's going to the toilet. Did <laughs> 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 he leave but, a seat? But the <laughs> aftermath was, we, we uh, had to get home to do our broadcasting, both Jerry and I were on in the mornings, and um, <laughs> the, 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 it was chaos in Rome Airport, it was F uh, Fumicino Airport, I think. And we were on Ryanair flights, early Ryanair, not, not Michael O'Leary Ryanair. These were BAC 111s. Respect, respectable Ryanair. <laughs> no, 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 no. Worse. Battered, <laughs> broken. Oh, no. Des desperate Ryanair. I mean, the BAC 111s, which were held together by elastic bands. And uh, <laughs> eventually we were loaded up on, on the, the aircraft. There were two of them. And when we got on to fly back, they made an announcement that we were going to have to stop at six o'clock in the morning in Nice Airport to refuel. Now we're only going from Rome to Dublin, but with all the people on board and all their luggage, they couldn't make it. The BAC 111s couldn't yeah. make it. So meantime, Dave is booked on, and you scammed on a lift on an Airbus. No, I scammed to live with you too, actually. Hey! Hey! Clunk! <laughs> anyway, he was gone, and Jerry and I were in this aircraft, <laughs> and as we come into Nice Airport, we hit a flock of birds, and you had that experience one time. The Ryanair flight came down and uh, we were stuck. We were stuck in Nice and yet we had to be on air. 
No mobile phones that could roam. Mm -hmm. So we're all looking for coins, for francs to stick in <laughs> slot machines to, to ring, and we couldn't get through. But a second Ryanair flight came in, and there were two empty seats on it, the seats that belonged to our wives. Yeah. So we insisted that we had a right to have those seats. Jerry and I got on the second Ryanair flight, got into Dublin Airport, and we both started our programs in the taxi yes. on the way from Dublin Airport to RTT. So on one occasion at least, both 2FM and Radio 1 were broadcast from a taxi. Well, Jerry, and the, the same the taxi. He had another great broadcasting experience he was telling me about a few weeks ago. We, we used to, we met at 20 to 1 every day. I was going down, coming up from the promo and Jerry would be finished his program, so we'd meet for whatever, gossiper, and uh, he said to me a few weeks ago, he says, um, the, uh, th there's a great quiz question about the Late Late Show knocking around. He says, who's the only guest that, that's been interviewed by the four presenters of the Late Late Show? Ryan Tuberty, Gay Bourne, Pat Kenny, and the missing seat, G. Ryan, right? I said, Jesus, you only did it at night. There's hardly anyone that... <laughs> Daniel O'Donnell is yeah, the answer. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, Daniel that's, that's a, that's a and it's another great achievement. Now. Jerry, fair play to you, Jerry. Yeah. Getting Ryan Gabo and PK in the one panel, that's some achievement. Yeah. <laughs> and the one, one night. It's true. Remember, we, we had lunch together. Ha Harry Crosby organised yeah. the lunch for the four presenters of the Late Late Show for Ryan, for Gabo, for yeah. myself, and Jerry, who had done it on the occasion of my mother's uh, passing. That's right. And we all got together. And there is a video. A video. <laughs> Evidence. Because Jerry turns around and goes, Do you know what we should do now? Look at this. And he starts videoing, and you, as you were reminding us, who did the commentary for it? Your man here. GB. Yeah. He does. Yeah. There, there they all are now. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Just, and, and all that sort of thing. We don't know where it is, yes. that tape. No, it's, it's, an, it's, it. it's now a missing tape. It's Jerry. on eBay. It's, 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 <laughs> we're joined by David Blake Knox, who's a program David maker, Blake who would have been a very dear friend and, and uh, you know, I suppose, a collaborator with Jerry down through the years. And how are you this evening? Well, good. good. As okay. good as can be expected. Well, he only called you DBK and by your initials, and he, he, he was very fond of you. And you, it must have been... Um, a lot of fun working with Jerry. You, you know, you brought him uh, with Ryan Confidential around the world and, and beyond, and he always enjoyed those trips. It was great fun. Jerry was fantastic company, has, has emerged already this evening. I mean, he was a joy to work with. He, uh, there was nothing of the diva in him. He always, uh, he, was a, he was basically a very happy man, and uh, he found happiness in his work and in the people that he met. He was fascinated by people. Yeah. Uh, he loved their stories. He, he has, as, uh, as someone has said, he's naturally very empathetic. Uh, Dave, I, I, I'm finding it very hard in the last few hours. It's, it's this business of referring to Jerry Ryan in the past tense. I find it extremely difficult in the past tense. I mean, I was there with more and the kids today, and like the kids, they're fantastic, and they really are. Like I know everybody's all saying that. They're also saying how great Jerry is. And there was nothing but the diva. Well, Jerry was a complete diva. I don't know what David thought about really. He was absolutely not with me. Oh, anyway. <laughs> he demanded first class everywhere, like peel me a grape kind of stuff, and that's what you wanted. Peel me from a Jerry, grape. You know what I mean? Like I mean, that's what you wanted. And like if of any couple I ever wanted to meet, like I've been out with myself and Ursula and uh, himself and Maura, thousand nine hundred holidays together. I went one time there to Greece, and who knocks on the door but Pat Kenny one time? Do you remember that time? Yeah, I do time? remember it. It was, it was quite, a time when Kathy up. got thrown in the pool and ended up wearing Jerry's 501. That'll be, be the one. Yeah. 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 Well, well, they, did anyone bring a camera to those, Holland? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Did you borrow it from you too? <laughs> no, no, it was my own camera. No, this, this is a different holiday. But uh, like, I'll tell you, the funniest and most important thing I think to remember about Jerry is the fact that he was the funniest guy I've ever met in my entire life. For sure. Never told a joke in his life. Couldn't tell a joke for his life, frankly. Yeah. He could tell he a mean story, absolutely, He could tell a fantastic yeah. story. Yeah. He is the funniest guy he you'll very, ever meet. But in some ways, you know, Joe, Jerry had this thing. And those the, the lunches and, and if you're, or dinner or whatever you're having, a beer or coffee with him, He's like a Shanna Key, a modern Shanna, and he'd have you in the palm of his hand going, and yeah. then you'll never guess. And, yeah. you know, and, and it gets bigger, and the story gets more exaggerated with every a telling. A brilliant mimic, a brilliant yeah. mimic, and the, 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 his was. mimicry of people was so incisive, but there was a, a much more serious side. He was a brilliant judge of people. Yes. He knew, he knew how to describe people, even after a sharp meeting, how, he, how you could describe the core, of, the core of people. But I remember him telling recently, oh, my God, he was doing a... a uh, my, doing a, a mimic of Vincent Brown, yes. right? 
And he said, you know, Sister Stan, this was Jerry, Sister Stan comes on to Vincent Brown, right? <laughs> and she comes on to talk about the homeless, and Vincent says, Sister Stan, the homeless, and, uh, and after two minutes, uh, Vincent says, but Sister Stan, you really are a member of the Nazi party, or whatever. Right? <laughs> and, then, and then he says, why, well, within 15 minutes, Sister Stan is sitting there, yes, I am Dr. Mengele. <laughs> and this was Jerry's, Jerry's interpretation. Uh, uh, of, yeah, of course. He exaggerated, yeah, yeah, and he was yeah, brilliant yeah. at yeah. being incisive about people. I, I just, remember when, when I got married in, in Paris, and uh, I was aware that Jerry was going to be in Paris with his family in Disney. <laughs> so he gave Jer Jerry the arrangements. This is where it's going to be. But like, we didn't want any kind of a public wedding. We wanted private, so there's no press going to be there. And uh, Jerry arrives at uh, the Ritz, the famous Ritz, for the dinner. And he comes in and he's like... And he said, like, I, I got the taxi from Disney, but then I changed taxi in case I was being followed. <laughs> and eventually... None of it was true. Of no, course, no, I'm sorry. He regaled the table yeah, for yeah, the evening yeah. with the, the story. And he was at his most hilarious, yeah. describing meetings with upstairs oh, again. With with the upstairs. bosses, yeah. A lot of it. Yeah, with, you're all right. You don't work for the place <laughs> anymore. You can speak freely. <laughs> <laughs> well, but he was at his most hilarious. I would imagine that a great deal of it was embellished, of course. Oh, there's no question about that game. Nonetheless, yeah. no question. Wonderful, wonderful he'd, he'd had a lot of time for you because he felt, as, as Joe, I think, was saying, that, that, gay, that you'd written the rule book and, and that you kind of mentored him. What did you think of him when you saw him coming up doing a pushing the envelope, as Dave so, so rightly says? Well, first of all, may I make it clear that we of Radio 1 the rather the adult station. looked down on these people coming from you, you, pirate radio. You call them young pop. <laughs> young pop. We, we, young pop. These, all these young pops, uh, apart from Larry, that is. For, uh, 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 old uh, pop. Uh, uh, old <laughs> pop. <laughs> we, pop. We rather looked down on these people because we yes, didn't very sniffy. And, and So I only got to know him long after uh, both Pat and, and, um, and um, Dave. But uh, what, what we I was just saying to him that, that he, he liked... Did, yes. What did you think of his style of broadcasting? The only way I can describe it is that when when he came on screen, he filled that screen. Fum, fum, fum. And that's yeah. the best definition yeah. you have. And when he was on the wireless, he filled that speaker. There's a generation and he was there. There's a generation watching tonight who don't know what Lambo was or is or meant. Lambo, as far, we, uh, on the Gay Burn show, we sent a team of people off to the west of Ireland to survive, to yes. do a survival thing. And so, as far as Jerry was concerned, it was getting a little dull as they reported into the programme every day. Yes. Is this so? That's they right, reported yeah. it every day. And so he decided to jizz it up a little bit. Yeah. And he described how, the day before, they had seen this lamb in somebody's field and they killed the lamb. They killed the lamb. And they skinned the lamb, or whatever you do to a lamb before you cook it. <laughs> yes. And they probably made a couple of pullovers while they were at it. <laughs> yeah. And then they cooked the lamb, and that's how they survived the night which was all fantastic and amazing and wonderful, except people, you didn't kill a lamb, oh my <laughs> God, on public. <laughs> and the uproar was As they called, ate their lamb oh, chops. Oh, yeah, 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 indeed. Exactly. The uproar caused around the country was immense, mm -hmm. that they, these people had killed a lamb belonging to somebody, but killed a lamb, which was the awful thing. And then it transpired. They hadn't killed the lamb at all. But there were all sorts of things. Spoofing. 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 You know, Hold on a second. He didn't kill the lamb. Do you know what else happened as well? Like all the time, every place they had to go to, there were toilets in various places in the cisterns. There was packets of crisps. Jerry told me all this. Oh, okay. They had okay. Hit, they you had didn't know about this. No. We didn't know about that. <laughs> How dare we? Isn't that the last crazy? laughs on Jerry. But, but don't forget, Gabe, on Radio 1, the truth is everything. You've got to tell the truth. The facts. That's what we want, boys. Yes. The facts. On 2FM, on Radio 2, Quite. Jerry's <laughs> programme, uh, maybe uh, the people who worked with him at the time will, will be able to testify, there was the first Irish submarine. Yeah. Oh, that, was yeah. that, that never existed. <laughs> there was no the the mood The great John McKenna, John McKenna who was like yeah. six yeah. weeks underground in a, in a coffin, yeah. and he'd be talking to him every single day. Yeah. John was in the next room. <laughs> <laughs> Like down there now, John. John Jesus, Jerry, oh, 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 oh,
been completely bonkers, right? Yeah, so I was yeah. fascinated to see this interview. <laughs> but he, he threw in one remark, which I was, which I was baffled by, not by Heather Mills. He said to Heather Mills, um, have you any regrets, right? Yeah. And it was, it was obviously, because he was brilliant at trying to get a good answer out, or get a truthful answer. And he said, because I have two articulated truckloads of regrets in my life, right? And that made me stop when I was watching it. I said, as, as David says, he was the happiest person I knew through all, through uh, the tough, tough times uh, personally and whatever in, in here or whatever. He was the happiest person I knew. But I said to him, what are his regrets? And I'd say his regrets, insofar as any of us know, because he wouldn't strike me as a person who had a lot of regrets, was maybe something to do that he didn't, look like we all have, we didn't do more with the kids. He did an awful lot with the kids. I used to meet him every Sunday morning up at Clontarf Rugby. He was brilliant, brilliant with his kids. But I said to myself, he couldn't have two articulated truckloads of regrets no. because he did so much and he lived. He is, if anyone wants to see the, the, the slogan, Carpe Diem, live for the day. Yeah. It was G. Ryan. He lived in the He lived in the moment. And, and, and Joe, I just want to pick up on one point that Joe said about about his children. Jerry was an absolutely devoted parent. Right. He was. He loved him. And he, he, he was involved in every aspect of his children's lives. And yeah. he was a super dad, in my opinion. What are you going to miss, Dave? The humour. More than anything else, the humour. The company. And all that that implies. That's what I'm going to miss most. He was the sort of fellow if you got the call on the mobile phone that there was a drink going or a bit of lunch, you dropped everything, everything. and went. Yeah. He was at it. Because yeah. you wanted to And there was be always a drink going and there was always a bit of lunch. There was. <laughs> on, on, on somebody. And when he walked into the room and as you were getting ready to go out, yeah. it was like somebody pulled the pin of the grenade and went, here's your heat. afternoon now. Instant <laughs> heat. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. It was great. I, I shall miss the, the, the moments that Joe was talking about because it, it's, I'm finishing my program at 12 o'clock, Jerry's finishing his, Joe's down doing the promo. Yeah. Um, with Ronan Collins for his programme and often it would be like it, we didn't meet at a water cooler no, no, no. but it was almost like that yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and we'd be muttering about and the scandal the was outrageous <laughs> and the stories were outrageous there were mainly none of about, which can be they were mainly about you actually <laughs> 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 I can imagine they've got, a, they they've got especially I scandalous I in the last <laughs> few years <laughs> yeah. as you've gone into a teenager you were an adolescent at this stage yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. what are you going to miss Joe? I tell you what I'd miss I'd miss his advice I miss his advice. He was a brilliant strategist. I know that, no, that's a, people might find that surprising. He was extraordinarily bright. He was extraordinarily yeah, bright. No and he knew people and he knew... I, I had, had an episode, I won't say with who recently, where there was a communication. And he not only wrote the communication for me and made me send it, right? He that's predicted true. what the reply would be down to the, the last... He was a mm. superb... Yeah. Uh, strategies and also and this is the great thing i think he's brought to this country he made us that's uh, people call it a swagger i call it a self-confidence and people will be mesmerized by him because we were all part of his life people will be mesmerized in the next few days at the breadth of people that are going to be yeah. friends of jerry yeah. can Ryan. I, can I and they are thing? friends of jerry can Ryan. i say one thing about uh, jerry i mean because he was on 2fm because uh, you know it was the pop station and so on Often he was overlooked in ways, and I was delighted to hear the Taoiseach being yeah. so fulsome yeah. in his praise and, and the president and so on. But I believe that, uh, you know, there are talents of varying degrees which have come from RT. I think it's been a great training ground for people. But I think with Mr. Wogan and Mr. Byrne, you, you are the holy trinity, as far as I'm concerned. Fantastic. Thank you, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's true. Yeah. Please. What you what you will miss is the fun and the laughter and the skit. Yeah, I'm gonna the miss the skullduggery. That so that's that's what you will miss. And the friendship. Yeah, um, Brenda. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to go back to our friends here because um, uh, Brenda, you work so so closely with with yeah. Jerry and and uh, this item is kind of drawing to a close and, and I just think it's 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 desperately sad because I don't want to let go. No, definitely not. What are you thinking? I'm seeing him in the studio and the hands are going everywhere and he's animated and he's full on. And I know how important his job and his work was to him. But I also know that the most important job that he thought he had was as a father. And I, I can say that and I think everybody would agree. Anybody yeah. who listened to the show would know how important his children were, how protective he was, how tonight of all nights 
he would want to be protecting them from the pain that they're experiencing. And I know that for a fact. And I think that's the saddest thing. And it's something he would just not want on them mm. for anything. And our thoughts are with the family and, mm. and his loved ones tonight. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and his loved ones this evening. Okay. Um, any last words, Gail? Give just them to Lord you. Reston. May he rest in peace. Lord Reston. And we'll give him the last word. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jerry Ryan.